it's Curly Proverbs and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own infused Ayurvedic oil. Now you can use anything for this particular oil. I use henna, amla and brahmi. If I had shikai kai I would definitely throw that in as well. So you can use any of your favourite Ayurvedic herbs. Of course you know my absolute favourite hands down is henna. Um, and the reason you might want to do this is because most of the henna or other Ayurvedic herbs that you can find in the typical Indian store are going to be full of mineral oil. In fact, many of them are literally mineral oil as the first ingredient and then fragrance and then amla or whatever herb it is that you're looking for. And the other thing is that they tend to have such an overpowering smell. Has anyone else thought that the smell of certain amla oils or certain henna oils is just intolerable? Anyone? Is that just me? No, seriously. It is so strong and um, you know, there's nothing wrong with the smell of like incense or there's nothing wrong with the, um, the smell of these oils, but maybe you don't want to walk around smelling like it all day or have it in your nose all day. Um, and it can be overpowering. I know some people have said that the, the smell has literally given them headaches. So it's, it's really, really strong. And I find that with fragrances, everyone is, is individual in what they like. So you can make this unscented, or you can add your own favorite essential oils. Now, one of the things with using mineral oils is that there's been quite a bit of research as to the fact that it is not the best thing really to be using. Now, a lot of people kind of sat on the fence and there has been research on, on both sides. Uh, I know that Johnson's actually funded some research into mineral oil because it uses mineral oil in its baby oil and lots of its products. So it did some research and the researchers somehow managed to find in favor of them because they were being paid by them. So it really does depend on where you look. but. I have done some research with EWG, which is an independent body that looks into uh, some of the health issues that you can have with common cosmetic um, items. You can search up any cosmetic item you want and it will tell you the toxicity grading and you can also look up individual ingredients so if you're interested I'm going to put the link below my video but basically mineral oils one thing that is very well known to do is actually sit on your skin and block it um, and of course your scalp is um, skin and what it does it is very good for um, keeping anything that's in your scalp on there so that includes bacteria it's it's like putting cling film on your scalp it's not very breathable it doesn't penetrate and it's not moisturizing in the sense that it does not actually get to those lower um, layers of your scalp so if you imagine that you have infused mineral oil with this um, amla or henna, whatever it is that you decide to use, yes, it's going to lock it onto the strand of your hair, but no, it's not going to facilitate it actually getting to your scalp and actually getting to your circulation in that area to give you the full benefits. So a lot of people who are prone to acne have found that it really does break them out. Again, the reason being it does not allow your skin to be breathable and it actually keeps your bacteria really, really um, enclosed and um, from being removed I guess as you would normally uh, remove it through the purification processes and sweating and the scalp. Now one of the downsides of using mineral oil is that it has been linked to uh, being a carrier of toxins. Now there's different grades that you can get and you know let's hope that is a good grade that's used in your product. Generally the cosmetic um, standard or cosmetic grade is actually um, pretty low in toxins but it has been known to carry toxins and the World Health Organization has actually stated that the mineral oils and hydrocarbons which are all in the same family are the biggest contaminants of the human body. I've actually found up to one gram per person uh, containing hydrocarbons and mineral oils so that's actually quite a big deal. It is not metabolized and broken down by your body 
so it can actually build up over time and the majority of these people who've actually been contaminated by the hydrocarbons have just gotten it from using it on their skin in things such as um, baby oil and sunscreens and certain lipsticks etc uh, so the world health organization did some sampling of the fat tissue of women who had had cesarean sections and their breast milk and actually found mineral oil in that as well so something that you might want to consider now my third and final reason why I think you should avoid mineral oils is that it doesn't actually benefit you at all. Um, if you're going to infuse coconut oil say for example you've got antioxidants you've got vitamins you've got things that help you to fight the free radicals and that the effect of free radicals on your hair and in your scalp and that really is worth doing especially if you can use an organic virgin um, or raw version of coconut oil that is you know really really worth doing so yeah that's my reason why I thought you know what I'm just gonna go like and see if I can actually make my own henna oil. And I think I had some success. So if you're interested, then keep watching. So here it is, this is my ride or die hair kit. It has everything I need in order to make my um, infused oil, coconut oil of course you know I've mentioned it before it's rich in vitamins D E K it retains moisture and it retains the protein in the hair and it has lauric acid the only other source of that is breast milk so it's really nutritious amla it actually has 20 times more vitamin C per gram than oranges do it increases your curl definition and um, fights dandruff henna well I've done a whole video on its benefits be sure to check that out if you're interested it's super strengthening and if you have any areas of damage or any crevices and gaps in your hair it actually fills them in Brahmi is renowned for strengthening the roots of your hair. So if you're having a problem with shedding, be sure to include it. This is just a container I'm going to be putting my um, oil into when I'm done. And then peppermint oil, which stimulates hair growth and actually normalizes the um, oil production in the scalp. So if like me, you actually need this curl squad in your life, my ride or die kit, I'm gonna be leaving the details of where I got each item from below this video, so be sure to check that out. So I start by putting a heavy bottomed or heavy base pan to start heating. I literally put it on setting one on my stove and added henna, one heat tablespoon and a teaspoon of brahmi and amla. And I heated it without the oil because I was watching a program um, actually an Indian cooking program once and it said that if you heat before adding the oil it actually allows the goodness and the flavor to be released better than if it was with the oil so I started by heating it literally just for a few seconds and then I added some extra virgin olive oil and then coconut oil now the reason I use extra virgin olive um, olive oil was because the alternative would be using fractionated coconut um, now Fractionated coconut oil is oil that's had the fatty acids removed and the triglycerides removed so that it doesn't get solid at room temperature. Now, in order to maintain it being liquid at room temperatures below minus 25 degrees, I decided that I would mix it with olive oil, which remains liquid at room temperature. So this oil would take on that particular property um, of, of the olive oil. And of course, olive oil is great for your your scalp and your hair care anyway. In fact, olive oil is one of the very few oils that actually penetrates the hair rather than coating it and sitting on it, um, in addition to avocado oil and coconut oil. So once that's all done, I put it into a glass container and I covered it in cling film and it really didn't take very long for you to start seeing the herbs and the amla is settled at the bottom and the infused oil is at the top and this is 10 hours later, you can actually see that the oil has really picked up a completely different colour and the infusion was successful. Now some people allow the infusion to go on for 8 hours overnight some for three days even up to three weeks for infusion uh, but I thought I'd show you how you would go about separating the herbs from the oil whenever you're ready and what you need to do is you need to use a cheesecloth or a muslin or even an old well actually not old a new pair of stockings would do as well just make sure it's secured with an elastic band I decided to decant into a plastic jug reason being one of the containers that I'm going to be storing my oil in is 
actually got a narrow um, neck and I really don't want to waste any product, um, you know, spilling it around. Now I use a dark container and the reason I use a dark container for storing this henna is because it actually helps to retain the benefits um, and the nutritious content of the oil because sunlight, um, any kind of daylight really will start to um, decrease the, the value of the, the potency of the herbs. Now at this point you might decide that you want to add an essential oil, you can use rosemary, you can use lavender, you can use tea tree, you could use peppermint, you can use them all in conjunction with each other if you like, in a combination of no more than four I would suggest. Um, but I decided actually I love the smell of the henna and the coconut oil together so much. I mean, it literally had a chocolatey undertone that infused throughout the whole house as I was making the oil. And it smelled like a spa, literally. I really did not want to add any essential oils to this and decided I wouldn't do so for this particular batch. I also decided that I was going to put some into a glass click container for easy access. I just like a range of ways of storing it and because my bathroom is dark once I've left it anyway, I didn't really have to worry about it losing any of the benefits of my oils or my um, herbs. So once that's done, you can strain through. And then literally this should keep for a number of weeks. This should keep for a really, like probably about, I would say about eight weeks. Now I actually decided that I wanted my oil to continue infusing for longer. So I scooped up a tablespoon of the henna and amla mix and I placed that in the bottom. Resting assured that it's actually going to sink to the bottom and I'm not gonna have to worry about getting that under my nails as I'm applying it to my hair. Now the remaining henna and amla is fantastic if you want to use it in a gloss or you want to you know use it in a hair mask straight off the bat you can do so so please do do don't please don't waste it oh my gosh learn to speak <laughs> voila ladies and gents here is your brahmi amla and henna infused oil doesn't it look gorgeous and chocolatey Oh, honestly it smells delicious let me know guys what you think of the oil if you try out the recipe I'd love 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 to hear from you uh, please be sure to like please be sure to share this on your Google Plus your Hangout your Facebook your Twitter and thumbs this up if you enjoyed it or if you learned anything from the video so guys, I mean, this is my method for infusing um, henna into oil. There are several different methods. There's methods where you can actually use fresh leaves, where you can actually use um, pods of, of amla, um, because actually amla is just is Indian gooseberry, so you can actually buy dried up gooseberry, or you can get henna leaves dried up or fresh, and you can use those. Um, and I know the traditional method actually um, used water and eventually oil, and then you evaporated off the water. So, um, you know, there's several different methods, but I found this one to be really easy and really, really straightforward. In order to make sure that you get the best shelf life out of your infused oil, you wanna make sure that when you're preparing it, you don't have any water in the utensils, you know, the bowls, the jug, or whatever you use as a decanter. You want to make sure there's no water because otherwise, if you have water, that's gonna increase the chances of you getting some kind of a growth of mold or, or thriving bacteria, and that's not really gonna help. <laughs> in fact, you might end up giving yourself some kind of a scalp infection and don't blame me if you do so you really do want to avoid moisture anyway if you guys have a go at using this recipe please let me know below i love hearing testimonials and let me know if you're gonna have a go at it and also let me know what you would like to see next i've heard your cries for a detangler video i'm gonna be doing that thinking also of doing a wash day video so let me know if that is something that you'd be interested in seeing anyway I'm sorry I spoke super fast I had so much information I wanted to get to you and I didn't want this video to like last for days so 
Take care of yourselves. Until next time, bye!